Hi, Peter and Noman. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's symposium conversation based on your collaboration for the Stay at Home Symposium. I'm so thrilled to have the two of you as part of this and obviously the wonderful performers in the Sakura Cello Quintet. Um, and I guess I wanted to start this conversation off by just putting it out there like that this is a totally new exchange that you participated in, in that most of our symposium collaborations have involved a finished piece of artwork and then a new composition based on that. But in this case, Noman, you've created something new inspired by Peter's Sarabon. So maybe Peter, if you could start out by just talking a little bit about your inspirations behind the Sarabon and writing it and how that led to Noman's um, involvement. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, my, this piece I'm writing for my cello quintet, Sakura, it, um, four movements long and three of the movements are finished. And so we decided to just do this Sarabon, which is the second movement. Um, and it, um, it really, it started from this, this small idea of a chord progression that um, kind of self repeats and, um, Without really consciously realizing it, I, I noticed, without consciously intending to, I noticed that it had kind of fallen into a Sarabond rhythm um, of, of the, the Baroque dance form. And so I kind of used that as a basis to have this almost like slow, maybe like processional quality in a sense. Um, okay, so the, for the second movement, I wanted a slow, um, movement to contrast the turbulence of the first movement. And I wanted to really sink into the uh, rich resonance that five cellos can produce. Um, and so I, I decided to structure this thing where it kind of progresses in a series of stages to some incredibly uh, like ecstatic, like blinding uh, climax and then uh, suddenly disintegrates. Um, and so I had this image in my mind of maybe, um, well, a lot of the piece, not just this movement is kind of based on the idea of these kind of slowly unfolding geologic and biological uh, processes. Um, so in this one, it's maybe um, an empty shoreline um, with the very, beginnings or maybe like pre-life. For a while I was thinking of calling it the Precambrian Serenade, uh, Sarabond. I decided not to include that word, but uh, something kind of ancient and uh, dark. And uh, it's a, this, it starts with this small kernel that develops into uh, something much more complex, like a life progressing to a point. And then at the end it, um, if there's a sudden collapse and it returns to the opening scene, but uh, with kind of darkened by uh, a very wistful solo cello added on top of it. So how did, uh, once you had sort of an outline for um, the themes that you just described in the Sarabond and all of that, how did you introduce Noman into this collaboration? And Noman, what were your immediate impressions just at the very beginning or inspirations? Um, well, I, I chose Noman uh, to do this because I knew she, well, first of all, she's uh, first and foremost a cellist um, and uh, she's, she will, I think, understand the, the piece in a, you know, maybe from a similar mindset to my own. Um, and also she's just like a ridiculously talented visual artist as well. Uh, and I should maybe mention that, um, um, I think I've always thought of Noman as kind of a sister because I first met her in Mongolia where I was doing a music uh, outreach program there with Midori. And long story short, um, she ended up uh, living with my parents in St. Louis and uh, studying with my old teacher, Ken Kulosa. Um, well, that's a very long story short. But anyway, so she's she's part of the family and you know we're very close and I thought she would because I'd, I'd seen some of her other work. It was just so good. So I thought she would be the perfect person to capture um, these kind of vague images I had in mind for the piece. 
and um, and yes, Peter is my brother, and he's been always uh, very fond of my artworks. Even though I, you, you know, I, I've done it for you know for my own uh, little hobby, but then I took classes when I went to Eastman and really learned and studied how to look at um, shapes and colors while sketching all those and. Um, I only do uh, artwork in black and white color because I like to use my fingers a lot. So I can, um, I've done a lot more black and white sketching. So when he asked me to uh, collaborate, I was just a little bit nervous because he's already uh, composed his piece and I wasn't sure if I could capture that as much as he intended to do. So. Um, I heard the, the very rough part of the piece where it was not recorded, but I could hear um, what he meant it by his music. Um, I heard a lot of movement that sounded uh, of more like a water. So I was like, okay, definitely there needs to be an ocean. And he started talking about there needs to be something built up that you see it in the back where it's either... Um, beautiful or striking. So we had a lot of different kinds of ideas. The very first one that he wanted was a big rock kind of coming out of the ocean. So I have done that, but it didn't seem quite warm. Yeah, so the, the, um, the we, we talked, it's, it's interesting because we both had this image of, of water. Um, so we kind of approached it coming from the same direction, which was really nice. Um, and um, so the first thing she sent me was this one. Uh, there were two versions here. I, I had had this idea for a giant rock spire, like impossibly giant with some kind of blinding light on top of it because the, the, the focus of the movement, it's always headed towards this. You're always being drawn towards this incredibly brilliant, um, bright climax. So I wanted to, I thought we could represent that. Um, this way, uh, but then we were thinking, well, these huge rocks are kind of um, not, they're, no one, how, how would you describe it? They, they were not warm as your piece was. Yeah, they were maybe, it was maybe too imposing to have this giant sharp spire sticking out of the water. Yeah, so um, this one, I, th I mean, this is so good already. Right, this could totally be its own thing. Um, but I, I thought, well, okay, how do, how do we get this? I wanted to capture a sense of spaciousness, which I think is in the music. Um, so we had the idea to put like a giant cliff in the background and you see the, this, this kind of pyramid of rock again. Um, but eventually um, we decided to um, relegate these cliffs to the background and really just focus on the, like a, the, sh the shoreline and then this giant glowing thing in the sky maybe it's the moon maybe it's I don't know and my job was is that I love the piece very much and I want to exactly capture exactly what he wanted and that's a big pressure on my part is and making sure that I want to do exactly what Peter wants because it's presenting Peter's piece um, and she to she totally captured it. I mean, the the contrast between this kind of cozy, in very very intimate beginning with like the very bright, um, ecstatic climax is like it's totally it's totally there. Um, yeah. So then maybe we can look at the the final one. Mm -hmm. So the final one because he always used warm and, and climax of the piece. Uh, for me as an artist, um, it's very um, important to find the right kind of canvas paper. So you can't just start with the white then you end up having only the black and white color. And it's kind of hard to um, show the dynamics between colors and it could not be quite warm as he described. So kind of going with the gray and I had to really think about all the textures, all the blending and uh, especially um, drawing an ocean is very hard. <laughs> so making sure I had to do a lot of detail work. Um, and I ended up doing the moon to be just kind of detailed, but 
a big moon you've ever seen as much as I can on, on the page. So that is the point where the piece is, it's in the climax part. So hopefully it will all make sense once people started listening to the piece as much as the looking at the, the artwork. Yeah. And I like also that the, the moon is like almost impossibly big and it, it gives this kind of like elevated kind of surreal quality to it, which I think breaks out of, I definitely wanted it to be more than just like a simple seascape photo. There, it, it needed to somehow rise into a higher plane. Um, so yeah, I, Noman totally captured it. And then I'm happy that he loves it because it all worked <laughs> out at the end. <laughs> yeah, hearing you speak about the process of sketching and Peter, your insights on it being too imposing at first with the first sketches um, and how you've come to this beautiful um, moon and the ocean and the landscape, it, it suits the piece so well, I find, because of like when I was listening to the performance of it, I was really struck by how emergent it felt. Like it was like this sort of like natural, inevitable movement with these five cellos. Um, and I think that's perfectly like echoed in the waves of the ocean and, and, and this sort of like climactic light in the moon. So it's really like so inspiring to hear you both speak about this. And this is like, we haven't done anything like this. So to be able to share this with our audience is like a huge honor. Well, thanks so much for having us. I mean, this was so exciting and fun to be able to, to, to put this together. Yes, same here. And I, I've uh, enjoyed working with Peter and um, it was for me, quite the light as well. Also listening to the piece like million times and I love the piece very much, yeah. Yeah, me too, it was like so, so beautiful, so beautifully filmed and captured too. So yeah, thank you both so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.